of the many wonderful features of our latex printer, and this is printing away on a 18-ounce uh, scrim banner, is you can make adjustments to the printer while it's printing. And that is very helpful because in addition to this wonderful light, so you can see everything in there, you can make adjustments and then watch them happen in real time. And once those adjustments are made, in Onyx for example, it will automatically apply them to the settings in the rip and it will give you a little notice at the end of the print that it has done so. Caldera is a little different in that it will tell you that the settings have been changed and recommend that you go into the um, easy media and make the adjustments yourself. But Onyx actually goes and directly applies them. Uh, both methods have you know, certain virtues. But what's important is that I can do this while it's printing. So let's say, using an example of the banner we were looking at earlier, that this banner was very heat sensitive and I had the temperature too high. Or uh, when I felt the, the, uh, the, the prints coming out of the front of the printer, they were a little greasy, you know? It didn't seem like it was quite dry. There's like a, a certain greasiness that accompanies not having a full cure. Well, if that's happened, you can probably make the changes while it's running. So in this panel here, under printing job, there's an adjustments tab. And the adjustments tab let you adjust four things while it's running. You can adjust the curing temperature, which is the only temperature. You can adjust the advance factor, which generally you're not going to be adjusting the advance factor. I, I almost don't think I've ever used that the entire time I've been running the printers while it's printing. You can adjust the interpass delay. Let me explain what the interpass delay is because it's kind of cool. An interpass delay, I'm going to put one on it right now. As you turn it up, you're going to see that the print head is going to, carriage is going to pause a little bit at both ends. What you're doing in a sense is giving the printer a little more time at whatever pass mode, in this case it's running at eight pass, it's giving it a little more time at each turnaround to allow a little more cure. So everything is staying the same. Your, your speed is going to slow a little bit because the pause at the end is obviously going to slow it down some. But it's going to give it at this speed and at this temperature a little more dwell time to be able to go through the dryer. And that's going to allow you to, for example, get over that little hump where it's just barely not quite curing, you put the interpass delay on a little bit and presto, it's dry. The interpass delay, in a way, you could almost view it as having pass modes in between pass modes. So from 12 to 16 pass on this 360, that's actually quite a difference in speed. You know, you're going from 124 square feet an hour all the way to 69 square feet an hour. But if you're at 12 pass, you can add some interpass delay and it's almost like it giving you a, a 13 pass or a 14 pass. It's giving you a little room in between these larger gaps and you can fine tune by adding a little bit of pause at the end of it. So an interpass delay has some real value. And I want to explain what that is and what it does. The other thing you can do here is adjust the vacuum. So quite often, especially with a lot of papers, you know, I'm printing and I think the vacuum needs to be at 30 or the category has it selected at 30, but I need more vacuum to hold it down. It's not staying flat. Uh, some materials with a lot of memory like um, cardstock or polystyrene, you know, I've been running a 015 uh, styrene. Well, 015 styrene needs some vacuum to hold it down. You have to turn that vacuum up. And you can make those adjustments while it's running. Now, certain things like cardstock and Styrene, you need to have that vacuum up before you even get to this stage. But some things you can fine tune that vacuum and it can really make a difference when you see it happening in real time. If you give it just a little time, you'll see everything smooth out and it will go normal if you're willing to be patient and watch the interaction of the vacuum with the printer. So again, you have curing. That's fairly straightforward. You can lower and adjust the temperature. You have advance factor that is actually adjusting the advance. For the most part, I've never had to use that, but it is there, it is the advance factor adjustment. Um, I take that back. Sometimes I use the advance factor on really high speed banner. So if I'm running four pass, the pass modes may leave between each pass a tiny little white line or a tiny little darker line. 
And if you adjust the advance a little bit up and down, you can tune in that pass alignment till it's almost perfect. And it will tighten up the white line or separate out the dark line of overlapping and it will be a perfect, even, smooth print. And you can make them as tight as you can get them. I use the advanced factor when I'm running really high speed four pass prints. That's my primary use for it. Interpass delay, it's used a lot in backlit, heavy ink load things. Um, I use it on some temperature sensitive medias. It might be a 12 pass with a little bit of interpass delay on it to kind of get me a little bit more dwell time. And then also your vacuum, and I use vacuum regularly. These are fine tuning media, and when you're done, you hit save changes, and then the printer just continues right on and applies these changes while it's running. It's very simple, it's easy, it's on the fly printing. Uh, this is a feature of the printer. It's actually on the older latex printers as well, but it's particularly developed and robust on this printer.